Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthew, and Mary Tyler Moore. And so, uh, for the betterment of our entire community, I would encourage everyone to vote yes on uh, Proposition A. What's the matter? Come on, Rob, will you please relax? Smile, flat like in the poster, see? See how happy you were when you became a candidate? That wasn't taken then, that was a Danny Stein's bar mitzvah. <laughs> what, you want something like this? Hi there, I'm running for city councilman. Vote for me or I'll give you cavities. <laughs> I can't do that. I gotta be honest with him. Rob, do you want to be honest or do you want to get elected? Well, I'm nervous. This is my first official political appearance. Wait a minute. It's only a ladies' club, and Laura's already over there warming them up. Rob, you'll be fine once you get there. Yeah, I think that's what they said to the captain of the Titanic, didn't they? <laughs> Come on, ask me some more questions. I have a question. What? When are you gonna help us with this script for Alan Brady? Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't mean to shove off all that work on you. Believe me, I'd a lot rather be here working than at some ladies' meeting somewhere. Oh, hi, Doug. Oh, hi, Rob. I'm in a terrible hurry. Did you come here to tell me that? <laughs> you guys know Doug Miller, my campaign manager. Yeah, hi, Doug. We were just pumping your boy full of hot air. Yeah. My, you're awfully cute for a campaign manager. And a father of four. Well, back to politics. <laughs> Doug, am I glad you're here. Rob, I can't stay. Well, you bet we got to get to the meeting. Rob, I'm afraid I can't go with you. Why not? The freezer at the fountain broke. Hey, is that political talk? No, that's drugstore talk. I own the village pharmacy. Maybe we can get Epsom salts wholesale. Well, you've got to go with me. This is my first public appearance with people. Rob, I can't. My ice cream will melt. I have to pick up some dry ice. Oh, Doug. They'll probably ask you a question about uh, the new parkway. Yeah, well, I got that. It's uh, east side route or west side route. East side route is shorter and it's cheaper. Rob, it's the other way around. Well, Doug, you've got to go with me. I can't. My ice cream is melting. Don't worry, you'll be all right. Nice to meet you. Yeah, so long, Doug. Yeah, you're not up to your four kids. <laughs> hey, Rob. Your campaign manager's ice cream is melting. Watch it, Rob. I think the same thing happened to Nixon. <laughs> Well, I assume that you've met your worthy opponent, Mr. Goodhart. No, I haven't. Well, that's no way for, for worthy opponents to be. <laughs> well, how are you? Oh, fine. How are you? Fine. How, how are you? Well. <laughs> well, I must get back to the meeting. I'll leave you two uh, political lions to paw the turf. <laughs> sit down. Sit down and have a nice chat. I know you have so much to talk about. <laughs> oh, Mr. Petrie, your wife is just adorable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so is yours. <laughs> well, you two boys get acquainted, and uh, I'll go and see how the meeting's coming along. All right. So you're uh, Lincoln Goodhart? Yes. <laughs> uh, you, you, is it proper for us to be uh, together, you know, before? Well, I don't know why not. We're not bride and groom, you know. <laughs> plain, ordinary candidates, I guess. <laughs> uh, something wrong? No, you actually look like your buttons. Oh, my campaign buttons. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, you look a lot like your bumper stickers. <laughs> well, of course, you're, you're not. You're more, you know. Yes. You, have you seen my balloons? <laughs> well, I have, you know, with my picture on them. For the, oh, when they're blown up, I... <laughs> no, I just have the stickers and buttons. Well, that's that's better. I don't. Uh, I didn't ask for the balloon. You know, I mean, kids can't vote anyway. Well, I like kids. Okay. You know, this is my first time out politically. You know, and I gotta admit, I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous. Well, that's understandable. Are you nervous? No. Beautiful uh, day out. It's going to rain. <laughs> you think so? I'm quite certain. 
Well, it can't rain today. The witch came out of the gingerbread house. <laughs> well, that, I, that probably sounds... My uh, son has one of those little weather forecasters on the wall. It's a plastic gingerbread house. And if it's clear, the witch comes out. And, and, but if it's going to rain, then Hansel and Gretel will come out. Very scientific. <laughs> Chemical or something. Well, with all due respect to your son's gingerbread house, there's an easterly low-pressure area meeting a cold front over Ohio, and that should reach here by this afternoon. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Rain. <laughs> I guess Hansel and Gretel can't always be right. <laughs> Look at the way they trusted that witch. <laughs> come along, girls. Come along. I'd like you all to meet the candidates. <laughs> there they are. and we'll get things underway. Have you met the wives? Oh, my own. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Petrie writes all those clever remarks for Alan Brady, you know. Lincoln, I'd like you to meet my wife, Laura. How do you do, Miss Petrie? Uh, and darling, this is Mrs. Goodhart. Oh, hi. Well, I suppose you're very excited about the campaign. Isn't it? Oh, no, I've been through this many times. Oh, wonderful. I'm very active politically. I'm on two committees, and I'm chairman of the DNS. And a precinct captain. <laughs> How about you? Oh, well, I, I try to be active, politically. I vote every year. <laughs> now, girls, girls, please. Now, let me have your attention. Before we mix and mingle, I think it would be nice if the candidates would introduce themselves. Uh, who'd like to go first? Oh, yes, I'm elected. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm Rob Petrie, and I'd like to say, first of all, that I'm very, very happy to be here. And my wife doesn't often let me loose in a room full of uh, lovely ladies. <laughs> well, I, that's the truth now. I mean, why would Laura insist on being here today? She uh, certainly didn't insist on coming when I gave a talk on riding at the Boy Scouts. <laughs> well, I guess you're very uh, anxious to meet Mr. Goodhart. Lionel. Of Lincoln. Thank you. My name is Lincoln Goodhart. Uh, could, you, uh, could you speak up just a little, please, Mr. Goodhart? Let's not slight the ladies in the back. Oh, of course. <clears throat> My name is Lincoln Goodhart. I am a candidate for your city council. Of course, the public wants to know about the issues. So I'm here to answer any and all questions that you may have. Uh, are there any questions? Yes? Mr. Petrie, how tall are you? Paul? Uh, well, I'm about 6'1", I would with, without my shoes. You're embarrassing him. Mr. Petrie, what's Alan Brady really like? Yes, is he really that funny? Or do you do it all? No, I don't. Can I have an autograph picture for my daughter? <laughs> You ready for a kiss from the future councilman? You know, Rob, I don't think you should get overconfident. From one kiss? One victory. <laughs> Honey, one kiss is hardly a victory. You're my wife. Oh, come on, Rob. I'm trying to say something sort of serious. Yeah, I know you are. You're trying to say that today was just a little step. I got a whole campaign ahead of me already. Well, uh, yes, that's what I was going to say. Well, don't bother. I already know it. You know what the most challenging question I had asked me today? How tall are you? I don't think my height is going to win me the election. Well, you never know. For example, most of our presidents have been taller than the average American male. Yeah. The average uh, height of the last 17 presidents is uh, five feet, ten and a quarter inches. Where'd you learn that? Lincoln told me right after that lady asked how tall you were. You know, he's a pretty bright guy. He knows a little bit about almost everything. He knows a lot about everything. I talked to him most of the afternoon. Yeah, good girl. You kept him away from everybody, didn't you? Yeah. He was uh, telling me about bond issues and urban redevelopment. Do you know about that stuff? Well, yeah, I, re I read an article on it. Lincoln <laughs> wrote an article about it. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Well, that's, that's probably the article I read. <laughs> Did you know that it costs us money for Richie to walk to school? Well, sure, he wears our shoes. <laughs> no. You see, our development pays an allotment to the bus company, even though the kids live close enough to walk. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, it dates back to before the sidewalks were in. Lincoln said that over the past five years, we could have saved enough money to buy Richie 53 pairs of shoes. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
And you know why the sidewalks are cracking? Too much sand in the concrete. I didn't know that. I don't know anything. Honey, I'm being a dead. I think I better do some studying. I got a feeling that press conference tomorrow is not going to be a tea party. Lincoln knows everything. Oh, come on, Rob. He knows a lot about sidewalks and buses, but he doesn't know everything. <laughs> Did you put the windows up in the car? No, why? It's starting to rain. <laughs> side is the long route. West side is the short. I, got, I can't mix that up again. Rob, relax. You're only going to meet a few reporters from some local papers. Uh, okay. uh, the reporters are here now. Shall I ask them in? Uh, yes, please do. All right, if I moderate. Oh, of course, of course. Come in. Uh, oh, please come in. Uh, Sit down just anywhere. Just take a chair anywhere. <clears throat> Good. To save time, both candidates have provided brief biographies, which you'll find right here on the table. Now, before we start the question period, we'll have each candidate make an opening statement. Mr. Goodhart. Yes. My name is Lincoln Goodhart. Along with the resume of my personal history and qualifications, you'll find a position paper stating my views and proposed actions on all the major issues. I believe that my written remarks are self-explanatory. However, if you feel the need for further clarification, I'll be happy to answer any and all questions. <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, since uh, Mr. Goodhart's already identified himself, you probably gathered that I'm Rob Petry. I didn't uh, include a synopsis of my views on the, on the uh, uh, issues here in my biography. I've Kind of figured that you came here to ask me those questions. And believe me, I would have preferred it if I could have mailed them in. <laughs> and judging from the number of empty seats, I guess a lot of people would have preferred I did mail them. <laughs> uh, Mr. Petri? Yes. The rest of the reporters are covering another story. Oh? Uh, yes, the Azalea Festival opens today. Oh. <laughs> and I'm certainly in favor of azaleas, I'll tell you, or flowers in general. <clears throat> well, I guess we should get the second question. Well, of course, that wasn't a question. Did you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. I'm Herb Littmore of the Sentinel, and I'd like to ask you your views on the proposed parkway routes. Well, I'm glad you asked that, Herb, because I am very interested in that, and I feel that the West Side Parkway is the uh, best. Right. The West Side Parkway is short, and the East Side Parkway is much longer, about three miles longer, and I think that the West Side would be about $2 million cheaper. I disagree. No, that's it. West side, uh, west side shore, east side long. That may be true, but there are many factors favoring the east side route. Like what? Well, for example, the, uh, the land along that route is uh, very sparsely populated and therefore much more easily acquired. Now, that would mean that although the east side route would be somewhat longer, it, would be, uh, it could be completed in anywhere from six months to a year sooner. I didn't know that. Yeah. In the long run, that would result in a substantial saving. I'll bet it would. <laughs> oh, yes. Samantha Merriweather, fashion editor for The Post. Mr. Petri, I would like to ask you what your wife is wearing to the rally. Oh, gee, she just showed it to me this morning. Uh, was uh, light blue... Yeah, it was a, a, a light blue suit that wore the uh, jacket and the skirt match. That's what makes it a suit. Yeah, that, well, I was right. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Goodhart. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know that. Uh, uh, probably a dress. <laughs> probably uh, brown. Yeah, that's right, her party dress is brown. Mr. Bronson, messenger. Uh, Duke Bronson, the sports writer. Yeah, yeah, that's well, right. I read your column. What you doing here? Well, it was either this or the Azalea Festival. <laughs> I'd like to know, Mr. Petri, uh, do you think New Rochelle could support a big league team? Well, uh, Herb, I, I'd love to see that uh, myself, but I think New Rochelle's a little small. And mm -hmm. If we brought a big league team in here, wait, the rest of us would have to move out. <laughs> well, I think that we should try to stimulate interest in local athletics. Right. Well, now, uh, since uh, Union High is unbeaten ever since they've switched to the modified I formation. That's right. 
This is the best season in years. Since 1927. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's, that, that was uh, Kip Kincaid's last year as coach. Well, and now that McGuire is 20 pounds heavier, well, I think we just ought to get the public to understand the high caliber of, of, of athletics that we have right here. I, I think Mr. Goodhart's absolutely right. Funny. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Booth Mitchell, the Tigers growl. The Tigers growl? From Central High. Yeah, well, oh. see, our team is called Tigers, so the paper's called Tigers growl. I'd like to go on record saying right now, I don't think there's anything wrong with the kind of music you kids play. Just do us old folks a favor and keep the volume down. <laughs> That's fine. Now, the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution guarantees the right of a speedy trial. It does? Yes, but... <laughs> Well, this uh, deals specifically with criminal cases. Now, there's no such guarantee in civil suits, and it can take eight to ten years to bring civil suits to trial. And I'd like to know what can be done to speed up the due process of law in these kind of cases. Eight to ten years? That doesn't seem fair. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, I'll look into it, Ruth. Thank, thank you. I'm awfully glad you brought that up, young man. As an attorney, that's been a pet project of mine for many years. It has? Oh, yes. Those delays have cost literally millions of dollars in both public and private funds. Millions? Oh, well, yes. What do you do about a thing like that? Well, I have been working on a six-point program here that I think will alleviate this situation. Uh, I'd like to hear it. Yeah, me too. Well, point number one, to eliminate red tape. Bob, you already knew that Lincoln is bright and has a lot of information, but that's not all a candidate needs. <laughs> right. Anybody can memorize the answers. Maybe he just memorized the right ones. Are you yeah. kidding? He knows more about the Alan Brady show than I know. Did you know our show was number one in Liberia? Why don't we ask for a raise? He's really smart. It takes more than that. He's got more, much more. I was just reading here in his biography. Listen to this. He graduated with honors from law school. A lot of people graduate from law school. At 18? <laughs> and we went to college before he went to high school. Look, it says right here that Lincoln was only a private in the Army. You were a sergeant. You're a much better leader. He wasn't promoted because he spent most of his time in an Italian prison camp. Well, at least he ate well. <laughs> says, uh, after months of planning, Private Goodhart successfully led 14 men in a daring escape. How do you know that's really the truth? It's just what he says. No, that's what the government said when they gave him the medal. <laughs> All right, so Lincoln is smart and knows a lot of things. But, Rob, you've got other qualifications. Like what? Well, <laughs> you're taller. <laughs> Ladies' club is for you, and so is everyone else I've talked to. Well, what do they know? They're just people. Well, you know what I mean. I, if, if they knew as much about Lincoln as I do, they'd think a lot more of him. You're beginning to sound like you don't want to win? No, I want to win, all right, but I want to win on my qualifications, not on my smile. Well, we heard your qualifications. You better stick to the smile. <laughs> Listen, Rob, don't worry. The best man always wins. No, I'm going to decide it. I'm going to call Doug. What for? I'm going to make darn sure the best man wins. How are you going to do that? I am going to withdraw from the election. It's not fair to the people who donated all the time and all the money. And I'm not usually a quitter, Doug, but the man deserves to win. I mean, even his name's better qualified. Lincoln. Oh, that's silly. Even his wife's name's Martha. <laughs> so? Well, it wasn't Laura Washington. Now you sound like you're afraid you're going to lose. But that's not it, Doug. The thing is, I'm afraid I'm going to win because I'm charming. Well, you know what I mean. There's nothing wrong with being charming. No, not if you're running for Miss America. Look, he may know more than you at the moment, because he's had experience. Bob, you remember when you ran that committee at the Writers Guild? You didn't know anything about that when you started, and you did great. Oh, yeah, honey, but the th I'm not a politician. I feel like a fraud. Oh, well, now, Rob, I am getting angry. My husband is not a fraud. Well, I feel like a big dope. That's better. <laughs> a fraud. Right. You're letting the people see just what you are. Then they have a right to decide if that's what they want. You think I can handle it? I know you can. Lincoln knows facts and figures, huh? Yeah. But you know people. And the council is made up of people just like you. What, a bunch of dopes? <laughs> no. A bunch of people who care about the town and want to give their time to make it better. Well, I want to do that. Then here's your opportunity. Look, Rob, a leader isn't just someone who knows what's right. 
He's also someone who gets the job done right. And you're a leader. Well? All right, I'll stay in a race. That's more like it. I'll see you tomorrow, Rob. So long, Laura. Good night, Dad. And Rob, you know what? You're gonna win. Darling, I'm proud of you. That was a tough decision. Well, I got an even tougher decision to make. What? Who well, I'm gonna vote for. <laughs> My okay, Mom. No, I'll call you the minute it's all over. Okay, bye. She's nervous. Boy, who'd ever think it could happen? People actually voting for ordinary Rob for an office. I, I knew it was going to happen, but it just doesn't seem real. And on the day of all days, election day. I mean, you know, it's actually happening. Hey, Rob, it looks great. Could look a lot better. Hey, Jim. Here are the up-to-the-minute election returns. In the 6th District... Goodman, 2,404. Wilson, 4,302. In the 9th District, Goodhart, 3,422. Petrie? Petrie. 3,510. Hey, 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 hey